On The Young and the Restless, neither Victor nor Nikki have a great track record for the people they hook up with in between their inevitable reunions. Victor's got a few dead exes in his past. But not as many as Nikki. She's kind of lethal that way. If any of them were to come back from the dead, who should they be? And what should they do? We got over 2,000 suggestions in the form of votes. Brad's not bad. Of all of Nikki's, Melody Thomas Scott, exes, Brad, Don Diamond, is definitely the most beloved. Nikki loved him. Tracy, Beth Maitland, loved him. Ashley, Eileen Davidson, loved him. His crazy ex-wife, Lisa, loved Brad so much that she kidnapped him and locked him up in a cage. But that's neither here nor there. Just a fun visual to bring up periodically, the fact is, 63% of you would like to see Brad back. If not with Ashley or Tracy, then with Nikki. It'll make Victor, Eric Braden, scowl. Not that it takes much. So, here's a funny story. Turns out another of Nikki's men, Joshua, also had a crazy ex-wife. What are the odds? She was presumed dead but disguised herself as a servant and came to work for Nikki and Joshua. When she heard them discussing having a baby, said ex-wife revealed herself to Joshua. When he wasn't ecstatic to see her, she shot him dead. Nikki's marriage ended prematurely because of that, and 32% of the audience would like to see him return. Everybody loves a wedding. Wait. Does everybody love a wedding? There are many reasons to love a wedding. There are beautiful destination weddings, like Cricket and Danny's Hawaiian wedding, and Kane and Lily's nuptials in France, which aired last week and was really filmed in Beverly Hills, California. Churches and venues get decked out with flowers for the special occasion, and everyone sits in anticipation of seeing the bride and hearing the bride and groom's special vows. And, let's be honest, who doesn't wait to see if anyone actually speaks up at that speak now or forever hold your peace part? There was a song years ago. I refuse to date myself by revealing who and when this song was popular, called Love is Lovelier, the second time around. But is that true? I found that in most cases, it isn't, because people tend to bring too much baggage with them from their first marriage, while a few know how to begin with a clean slate. Most of the couples on Y&R have been married, divorced, and remarried to the same partner and I have to ask, why? Was it because they felt they were soulmates, or was it because the old shoe fit better than the new one would? Let's have a look at how marriage can change a person for better or worse. Did some of these people break away from their nefarious pasts and become better people, or did they believe their union didn't mean they had to change the lifestyle they were accustomed to? Jack was a playboy in his younger days. He never failed to hop into bed with just about any female he came in contact with, from his dates to betting all the Jogloat models. Jack married and divorced Patty Williams and Nikki Newman, and Luan Bolian died from a terminal illness before Jack settled down with Phyllis Summers. Next to Luan, Phyllis has always held Jack's heart, and I don't believe he will ever get over her. Apparently, neither does Peter Bergman. Jack was quite the cad back in the day. He was convicted of shooting Jill, I will only list some of the crimes characters were accused of without mentioning whether charges held or were dropped, left Victor for dead after a verbal altercation altered spreadsheets that allowed him and Brad to take over Newman Enterprises, tricked his father, John Abbott, into cutting Gloria out of his will, conspired with Adam to fake Victor's diary with a phony confession that Victor killed Walter Palin, shut Ashley out of ever becoming CEO of Jawboat with a dreaded blood Abbott clause that had been meant for Phyllis when they divorced, and the list goes on. Jack's failed marriages to Patty and Nikki were no surprise. Patty was a wackadoodle, and Nikki couldn't get over her love for Victor. When Jack set his sights on Phyllis, you could instantly feel the connection between them. It wasn't a union I was in favor of because I knew Phyllis' history. It had been far worse than anything Jack had ever done, but she proved me wrong. Eventually, I fell in love with this couple, played by Michelle Stafford and Peter Bergman, in particular. Phyllis and Jack got married at the Abbott residence in a very quiet ceremony with only the family present. The chemistry between these two was palpable. The Abbott family saw the love between Jack and Phyllis. Sadly, that marriage ended when Phyllis discovered that Diane Jenkins had given birth to Jack's son Kyle. Jack had invited Diane to live in the Abbott's pool house. 
The confrontations between Phyllis and Diane were vicious, and Phyllis walked away from the marriage when Jack constantly sided with Diane. Prior to marrying Jack, Phyllis' history of crimes could fill a book. Alleged and attempted murder, revenge, blackmail, conspiracy, bribery, altering paternity tests, etc. Phyllis never stopped going after what she wanted, and if that meant running people down with her car, then so be it. Phyllis never stopped to think about the consequences of her actions. She always kept her focus on the prize, and no action on her part was unthinkable. The ends always justified the means. Years later, Jack and Phyllis decided to take another run at marriage. They remarried in St. Bart's, and right after the ceremony, while Phyllis was taking a shower, Jack was kidnapped and replaced with a doppelganger. When Phyllis found out that she had been living with, and constantly sexually assaulted by, Jack's double, she couldn't reconcile the fact that Jack wouldn't seek revenge against Victor. Phyllis turned to Billy for comfort. Phyllis had been completely out of control before she met Jack, but Jack had a stabilizing effect on Phyllis, her scheming and retaliation were minimized, and Jack stopped being a womanizer. This marriage had a huge stabilizing effect on both of them, but once they divorced, Phyllis slipped back into her former skin and back to plotting and scheming to obtain what she wanted. Jack didn't go back to his old ways. I really want this couple to find their way back to each other because they are far better together than they are apart. Sharon and Nick are the Romeo and Juliet of Y&R. They became sweethearts while still in high school. In spite of Nikki's feelings that Sharon wasn't good enough for Nick, they got married in a small chapel with only family present. Nikki looked stunning in a lilac suit, but clearly, she wasn't pleased that Nick was marrying Sharon. Sharon's wedding dress was white satin trimmed with yellow ribbon and flowers. She looked stunning. During the wedding ceremony, Nikki's looks of disdain were absolutely laughable. Did she believe that Nick would see how much she was against him marrying Sharon and stop the wedding? How many people warned Nikki against marrying Victor, yet she married him anyway? She certainly became the mistress on her high horse. Well, maybe Nikki had good reason not to be happy with Nick's choice in partners, because after a couple of years, the marriage ended in divorce because Nick cheated on Sharon with Phyllis after Cassie's death. Where did the love go? Nick swore Sharon was the only person he would ever love. A few years later, Nick and Sharon decided to marry once again, but it just wasn't meant to be. At the Chapel of the Good Shepherd, while Sharon and Nick exchanged their vows and rings, the wedding was interrupted when Phyllis, who was dressed in a white chiffon wedding dress, threw open the doors of the church. The service was incomplete, and Nick and Sharon remained single. After a four-year break, Sharon and Nick once again headed for the altar. While exchanging their vows, Sharon recalled Nick stating that there was nothing they couldn't overcome as long as they were honest with each other. Sharon blurted out that Nick hadn't been honest. She said she'd considered not showing up, but she was happy she was there because she'd wanted to see Nick's face when she told him she wouldn't marry him. Sharon had gone out of her way to hurt Nick. What had started off as a happily ever after for Sharon and Nick turned into a break in loyalty and trust, and a whole heap of hurt. Why do they keep trying to reunite? The deep love they have for each other has never died, but at this point, they appear to be better off as friends. They do have a great understanding of each other, but I think they should remain friends. Some couples are never meant to be married because they are so much better as close friends. That is how I see this couple. I love their friendship because they turn to each other for support and comfort. I really want them to stay friends rather than a married couple. Sharon's crimes were basically as a result of untreated bipolar disorder, a psychiatric illness. Nick's crimes were mainly as a result of being set up by Adam, but cheating in a marriage never ends well. Once a partner strays, marriages can rarely be saved. Many find it a rush to taste forbidden fruit, and they just can't stop. I believe this is what happened with Nick, Sharon, and Phyllis. Did marriage change this couple? Nick cheated on Sharon with Phyllis after Cassie's death, and he eventually married Phyllis, but their union was volatile. They were constantly arguing and rarely on the same page. During their marriage, 
Phyllis cheated with Ronan, and Nick cheated with Sharon, so there was no surprise their marriage didn't last. So, why did they decide to try again? Did they believe that they had matured and by promising never to stray again, they could make the marriage work? Well, no surprise. The second marriage didn't work, either, but they did produce a child, Summer, who turned out to be a wild child and a brat. Unlike in her marriage to Jack, during Phyllis and Nick's marriage, Phyllis continued with her scheming and vengeful ways. There was never any harmony in their marriage, just a lot of angst. Currently, Nick and Phyllis are behaving the way that Phyllis and Millie had been with each other. There is nothing there except sex anywhere there is a reasonably flat surface. Are they looking for marriage number three? Good grief, I sure hope not. I never liked this couple. I think they should both move on. I believe that Phyllis needs to go back to Jack, and Nick built to find his forever, and not with Chelsea, should she ever leave Adam. Speaking of Chelsea and Adam, where to begin? Let's just agree that Chelsea and Adam each have a long criminal history. They are like nitro and glycerin and ready to explode. Is one worse than the other? This is a couple that shouldn't be together, and this is one match that wasn't made in heaven. They don't complement each other, they feed off each other. Chelsea was raised as a con artist, and no matter how much she claims she has changed, the con artist within will always emerge, and pretty much anything Adam suggests, I believe she will go along with, because it's the thrill of the ride. Adam, on the other hand, is a very dark and brooding soul with a huge chip on his shoulder. He resents the fact that Victor wasn't there for him, in spite of being told countless times that it had been Hope's wish that Victor stayed away. Adam sees the world constantly plotting against him, and he, in turn, continues to seek revenge when he believes someone has wronged him, whether they have or not. When Adam and Chelsea decided to get married, Adam planned a traditional wedding for them at his mother's farm in Kansas. Once they were married, Chelsea became jealous of the relationship that Adam had with Sharon, and eventually, Chelsea warned Sharon to stay away from Adam, 